Welcome to JVR Industries YouTube channel. Today I'm going to go over how to replace your oil on your VAC 100 and your VAC 110. Today we're going to go over how to change your oil on your JVR VAC 100 and VAC 110. But before we do that, I'm going to quickly run over what we're using today. We're using the VAC oil. It's a JVR premium vacuum pump oil that is food grade and it's formulated to provide maximum performance and protection on your JVR unit. This is including the VAC 100, the VAC 110, and the rest of the VAC series. Now we sell two options. We sell the one quart and we sell one gallon. The one quart provides about seven changes on your VAC 100 and three changes on your VAC 110. The one gallon provides about 28 changes on your VAC 100 and 12 changes on your VAC 110. So if you're looking to pick up some VAC oil from JVR, I'll leave a link in the description below on the one quart and the one gallon. So let's get started with this oil change. First, you want to run a 99 second cycle on these units just to get that vacuum pump getting warm enough. What this will do is lessen the viscosity, making the oil thinner. This will make it drain more. That way, there's not as much residual oil from the last oil change inside your vacuum pump. And we'll do this on both the VAC 100 and the VAC 110. Now while this is running, I'm going to go over um, a couple things, some safety things, as well as how to access the internals of your, your body of your unit. So first, make sure you remove the filler board plates from within inside the chamber. That way, when you're going to hinge the body forward like this, it's not going to damage the composite chamber on your VAC 100 or the seal bar in either of these units. Next. Make sure on the VAC 110, use that locking lid handle to lock the lid in place before hinging it forward. Okay, now that the safety's out of the way, uh, it's, next thing is you want to be able to access the internal. So first on your VAC 100, you want to remove the bottom three three millimeter screws. Now, I've already done this, but go ahead and do that while we're waiting for this to warm up. And on your back 110, there's a number two Phillips screwdriver screws that are at the base as well. There's only two of them, so just make sure you remove those, and then you're ready to hinge the body forward. Now, when you hinge the body forward, you just want to lift it up carefully and slowly so that you're not throwing the thing off your table. Uh, and then you want to use this little locking mechanism, the hinging mechanism, to lock in place. So when you lift up your unit, just make sure you press it into place to ensure that it's locked. Okay, now that you've run a 99 second cycle to reduce viscosity on your oil, you're gonna wanna hit the power button on the control panel as well as the power switch on the back of your back 100. Next, unplug the IEC cable from the back of the unit. Now that the screws have been removed, we're ready to hinge the back 100 forward. And like I said before, just make sure you press on this hinging mechanism with your thumb to lock it in place. Now that we're all set there, we're going to bring the unit to the end of the table. And we're ready to drain. So using this five millimeter Allen key, you're gonna start unscrewing the oil drain plug. Now do this slowly as the oil likes to project that oil drain plug. Okay, now it's coming out pretty quick. 
I'm just going to use my other finger to pull it out. Be careful, the oil is pretty warm. And we're just going to let it drain naturally on its own for a little bit. Once it starts spouting off like this, I'm going to start lifting the unit up to make sure I get all the oil out of that pump. So we're just going to raise it up. Get every last drop out of it. Now, you'll notice on the bottom of my unit, there's just a hole here. You might have a black plastic piece there. You can just pull that right out and reinstall it every time you do the oil change. Okay, now all the oil is out. We're gonna reinstall the oil drain plug. Now, don't over tighten this. Okay, now we are ready to fill up our vacuum pump. So now grab your funnel that comes stocked with your back 100 and back 110. Grab your oil and let's unscrew the cap to this vacuum pump. Now on the back 110, it has an additional fill screw. The secondary option is manufactured for other machines that are out in the market. But as far as the back 110 goes, we advise just using this primary fill cap for your vacuum pump oil. Don't worry, if you fill it up at the second port, it will not be an issue. But we prefer to just have our users use this primary fill. And then you're ready to fill up the oil. Drop your funnel in. And make sure you do this process nice and slow. And watch through the eyesight glass right here to make sure you don't overfill it. This should be about halfway full to three quarter full. Okay, that's looking really good. And now I'm gonna pull, pull that funnel right out of there. And we're gonna drop this screw cap back in and run a cycle. So I turn my unit back on I'm running another cycle, and all that's doing is getting that oil up to a viscosity that I, that's desired. So I just ran that 99 second cycle real quick, and that's just gonna cycle it through the vacuum pump, and then we're gonna open up the body again, check the oil level, because sometimes I'll adjust it a little bit. And if we need to top it off with a little bit more oil, we'll do so. So I just got done with that 99 second cycle. I'm ready to power down my unit. So same thing again, just shut off the power on the main control panel, shut off the power on the back switch and disconnect the IEC cable. Now, thankfully I have a stainless steel cart that we're selling because uh, it makes for easy rotation. So check that out on the website. So now that I have this rotate, I'm gonna lift it back up and I'm just gonna look at the oil level. And we are looking still really good. It's just below three quarters, but it's between a half and three quarter fill. So I'm pretty satisfied with how that is. I'm all set to go and I'm ready to start operating again. Well, now that the oil change is done, you are set to start packaging with your VAC 100 and your VAC 110. If you guys have any further questions regarding oil changes, or really anything regarding your VAC 100 or your VAC 110, leave the questions in the comments below. And feel free to subscribe to JVR Industries YouTube channel. That way you can kind of keep up to date with everything that we're posting regarding your VAC series units. Uh, thanks again for watching JVR Industries on YouTube.